By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my Elementals deck again. So it's that blue and red revised only brew that I'm bringing to the table. And I am playing against a very interesting deck. I'm playing against a reprint black Tron deck. So this deck has a lot of unexpected cards in it. Uh, and before we actually start with the games, like always, I will do a little bit of deck tech. I have deck photos for you of both of these decks. Uh, if you want to go straight to the games, no problem. Check the description below and click on the timestamp. And here we are going to continue to discuss the deck deck. And let's start with the Mono Black Tron deck. And this is the deck that I am playing against today. It's really, really interesting. Um, I know it's not a great picture, but still it gives you a good idea. As you can see, it is a Tron build because there on the right, you see all the Tron lands. Now for the people that don't know, uh, Tron works in a way that uh, you have got Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower. Now, if you tap these lands, they just give one generic mana. But, there is a big but, something special can happen when all three of them are in play. So you need one Urza's Mine, one Urza's Power Plant, and one Urza's Tower. Then, all of a sudden, you can tap the Mine and the Power Plant for two mana each. And you can tap the Tower for three mana each. So that means that from that point forward, you will have a lot of mana. So what you see usually in these decks or ways to abuse all that land. Now, when we look at this list, what's interesting is that there's there's not really a lot that uh, the player can really take advantage of it. Of course, you see those four uh, Triskelions, they cost six mana, so that's pretty steep. So, of course, you know, additional mana from a Tron combination will help you to maybe put a trike out in turn three, maybe even turn four. So that would be quite powerful. Um, I guess you could say that the Sengir Vampire with the casting cost of five, you could get it out early with Tron. Then again, the problem is with, with a card like Sengir, uh, it's too black to cast. So that's that's difficult. You know, it's too black and three. So you need to already have two swamps in play. Um, interesting here. I think I think the two cards that can really abuse Tron in this build are the uh, Carry On Ants. So he's playing with one copy of that. Carry On Ants is two black and two for an O1 one summon Ants. And for one colorless mana, you can give it plus one, plus one. So if you've got a lot of mana, you can sink it all in the ants and you've got huge ant, I guess, a huge ant colony um, attacking your opponent. So you can just deal a lot of damage. So that's uh, that's a scary thought for me. And also there's the Dragon Engine classical creature from Antiquities. Not very good, I have to say, but maybe if you have a lot of mana, it can be useful. It's three mana to cast is there in the middle bottom. Um, it's a 1-3 artifact creature and for 2 mana you can give it plus 1 plus 0. Oh. So if you have a lot of mana you can make it big basically. Um, interesting here as well I think is Hell's Caretaker. So Hell's Caretaker uh, is a creature that uh, it's from Legends just like the Carry On Ants. And during your upkeep, this is, this is a Chronicles copy by the way, uh, during your upkeep you can tap it and you can sack a creature that you own to get a creature back from your graveyard and put it directly into play. So one of the things that you can do here is really um, abuse Triskelion because when Triskelion comes into play, it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters and you can uh, use those counters to deal damage to any target. So you play your Triskelion, you empty your Triskelion and then when it's your, your next turn in your upkeep, you tap and sack the Triskelion with Hell's Caretaker and take another creature from your graveyard, preferably another Triskelion, and then you, your Triskelion comes back into play with three plus one plus one counters. So that is really awesome. Um, there are just so many cool cards in this deck. Like I, for example, see the Zenith Poltergeist. It's two black and one is from Antiquities. You can tap it and then you can turn target non-artifact creature in an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to the casting cost. So what you can do with Scenic Poltergeist is turn Moxen into creatures, but because the casting cost of a Mox is zero, it turns into one, one, uh, zero, zero, sorry, and it dies. So it's kind of a weird way for Black to take care of Moxen, actually just to take care of, of artifacts, I guess, turning them into creatures and finding a way to kill them because we've got Nettling Imp and Royal Assassin, which is a classic combination. We also see a full playset, and this is quite surprising, of Phyrexian Gremlins. Now, Phyrexian Gremlins is probably a card you haven't seen that often because it's only been printed in antiquities. So that's probably why I haven't seen it often. It's a super cool card. I believe it's the only Gremlins card in the game. Um, what you can do is you can tap it to tap an artifact. So basically it's a relic barrier, but then it's more expensive to cast. It's also a one-on-one -on -one creature. 
so it's easier to get rid of. But since in old school, a lot of people are playing with artifacts, this could be super annoying. And remember, in my Elementals deck that I'm playing with today, I'm playing with Mana Volts because I want to get my Elementals out early. But I mean, with Phyrexian Gremlins and Relic Barrier there, it's going to be super difficult for me to actually play my Mana Volts out because my opponent can just tap them instantly and I cannot use the Mana anymore or I have to basically play my Mana Volt and use it the same turn, um, which which is not always ideal. Um, have I, I don't think I've talked yet about the Parfait package in this deck again. Parfait um, refers to Howling Mine, Winter Orb and Relic Barrier combination because Howling Mine and Winter Orb are the only two cards in old school magic that you can tap to deactivate. So Howling Mine we know is an artifact that lets every player draw an extra card. Now what you can do is you can play out your Howling Mine, tap it with your Relic Barrier and that means that when it's your opponent turn, if the Howling Mine is tapped, your opponent doesn't draw an extra card. Then it's your turn, you untap your Howling Mine, untap upkeep draw and then it's your draw step and um, you draw an extra card and after that you tap your Howling Mine again and your opponent cannot take that same advantage. Now it's similar tri trick can be done with Winter Orb, it's exactly the same, you can tap it to deactivate it. So I mean it's it's a known tactic, it's quite interesting also because he's playing with the Gremlin so I'm sure he'll have something to tap his artifacts down with. So just interesting to see if this actually works and uh, like I said it is a budget brew so if you like this you know you can pro probably build it in pretty pretty affordable a, a card that's definitely missing from this brew i think is demonic tutor the reason it's not in here is probably because it is a budget deck uh, the reason i'm saying uh, demonic tutor specifically not just because it's an, a, a great card in any deck but specifically in this brew because what you can do with demonic tutor it's one of the only cards in old school that lets you search for any type of land so in this case he's playing with tron so maybe you want to have a specific tron land and Demonic Tutor can actually do that for you. And that's that's really, really, really unique in old school magic. Okay, well, this is more than enough talk about this beautiful deck, by the way. Um, let's take a look at the deck that I am playing with today. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. So it is my uh, red and blue elementals deck. And um, you know what I want to do with this deck? It's pretty simple. I just want to play a Mana Volt turn one and turn two. I want to play one of those super cool elementals. I'm playing with three Earth Elementals, three Fire Elementals, two Water Elementals, and four Air Elementals. So, you know, I've got a lot to choose from. My biggest enemy here is uh, is the Mana. Uh, I wanted to keep it revised only, so there are no City of Brasses in here, although that would really help. Um, there are no Moxen in here, which kind of makes it uh, way more budget friendly, by the way. And you could also consider, if, if you're looking at this deck, you think, oh, this is something I would like to build, but the dual lands are just really, really expensive. I agree, they are just ridiculously expensive. You can replace them with reprints of City of Brasses. You kind of get the same quality overall in the deck. Um, but what I wanted to say is when I have that first turn Mana Vault drop, um, a risky factor is all these elementals need like or two red or two blue. So it has to kind of, I need the mana gods to kind of be with me on this. And I also hope um, that my opponent, because he's playing with a lot of um, uh, creatures and artifacts to tap my artifacts, that he doesn't have like a fraction gremlin or relic barrier to tap down my mana vault, because that would be like super annoying. And I don't actually have anything to sacrifice my mana vault too so that could actually be a reason uh to play with energy fluxes in this deck so that's something that i've been thinking about maybe replacing the shatters or, or a few shatters with uh two or three energy fluxes so that could be interesting at least maybe at least put them in the sideboard because now they're not even in my sideboard um but anyway this this deck is pretty much self-explanatory just play really big creatures try to get them out early with the mana vault deal some damage and then, you know, possibly finish him off with the direct damage or use the direct damage to, um, you know, kind of kill his kill his blockers and get my elementals in for even more damage. Uh, one of the favorite things for me to do in this deck is actually forking an Ancestral Recall. Unfortunately, I am not playing against anybody who's playing with, with uh, uh, blue power, so that's not going to happen today, but it's still one of my favorite things. I think fork is a great card. Let me know if you like fork. Um, because I, I just think it's a great card. And if you have new and interesting combos with it, I would love to hear from you. So this is the deck that I'm playing with. Um, curious to see how it will perform against uh, the deck 
uh, the, the budget Tron Black deck. So uh, without further ado, let's go to game number one. Game number one, and my opponents on the play here, Tronny Tryhard playing a power plant, passing turn here, Volcanic Island from myself, a mine here. Oh, if he can find a tower, he will have Tron turn, turn three. That is kind of scary, but there's a swamp. So that's good news for me. I've got two blue open. That means counterspell enabled here. Uh, playing another blue source, passing turn, not doing anything. So no early uh, elementals from my side. And interesting, you're playing that scenic poltergeist. We talked a little bit about this guy in um, during the deck deck at the start of this video. Let's see what I'm going to do here. Uh, mountain into a mana vault. Passing turn, so my opponent can use a scenic poltergeist to make non-artifact creatures into creatures such as my mana vault. So my mana vault would be turned into a 1-1 one, one creature because power and toughness equals the casting cost. It looks like uh, Trani cannot find um, his Urza's tower and there is a quick counter spell on the Sengir Vampire. And interesting here, playing a lightning bolt on the Xenic Poltergeist. Not quite sure why I do that. Perhaps I have um, a Wheel of Fortune in hand that I want to play later on. That could be a reason. Uh, playing an Earth Elemental here. So that's pretty good news for me. A 4-5 powerhouse. I can start attacking. Let's see what my opponent can do. Paying 4. Casting a book. And that book can become a problem as soon as my opponent hits that Urza land. Because then he'll have so much mana. Uh, Urza's tower, of course, I'm talking about. He'll have so much mana to draw extra cards. Dealing 4 damage here. He goes to 16. And playing in a Shatter. So it's a pretty good turn for me. Taking care of the book and dealing damage here. And there we see a beautiful creature. Uh, we see the Nightmare. But there is a big but. He only has two swamps in play. So it's, it's just a 2-2 flyer. Attacking here with the 4-5. So he's going to drop to 12. Playing another Mana Vault. And using it instantly to cast even more creatures on the board. There is a Fire Elemental. So I can do a lot of damage next turn. And look at it, Urza's tower. He's got Tron capability. Oh, this is painful. Ashes to ashes. Well cast. Well done, Tronny. That means I'm losing both of my creatures. They're removed from the game. But for the people that don't know, this this card, uh, Ashes to Ashes, two black and one, removes two creatures from the game. But if you cast it, you do have to pay five life. So that's why he's dropping to seven. But that's not really a problem for him. Uh, he now has... Tons of mana, and I have no threats anymore on the board. And here we see uh, a Phyrexian Gremlin, which is a big pain, because Phyrexian Gremlin can start tapping down my mana vaults. And that means that um, there's really no use for me to untap my vaults. I just have to take damage from them. Going to 12 after also taking the damage from the attack of the Nightmare. At least I'm able to cast another threat here. Um, it looks like I'm doing it a little bit different here, taking back my own air elemental. Let's see what my plan is. Maybe I want to tap my mana fold because I want to keep blue mana open to counter, but I don't think that's possible because I need two blue. It looks like I'm puzzling a little bit here, but I think it's impossible for me to keep two blue open if I want to play an air elemental, and that's exactly the situation. So I've tapped down the other mana vault. Uh, looking back, I don't think this is a good play because what happens next turn is that my my opponent will now start tapping down my soul ring. But let's first see what uh, Tronny Tryhard is going to do. It's got tons and tons of mana because Tron is activated. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 13 colorless mana and 2 black mana. And he's paying 4 to cast Carry On Ants. And that's just, that's just a crazy card because... For, it's an 0-1 creature, but for one generic mana, it gets plus one, plus one. So he can use all his Tron mana to make a huge ant colony and attack me. I mean, this is not good. I, I need to get rid of that ants. Let's see. Playing a Wheel of Fortune. Wow, very good cards that I'm discarding there. I saw a fork, I saw a brain geyser, and an air elemental. Interesting choices there. I could have, well, I couldn't have, have cast the air element. Of course, what I'm looking for is a way to deal some damage. Because if I can play a lightning bolt, I can drop him to four and then attack with the air elemental. Instead, I'm finding an earthquake. 
Casting it to at least get rid of the Phyrexian Gremlins, he's going to 6. Now remember, the Lightning Bolt that I played earlier in the game, I mean, that was definitely a misplay. I mean, why was I... Now I have to block with my Air Elemental on the Carry On Ants, but what I wanted to say is why was I uh, taking care of the Poltergeist? Because it was no threat at all. Just let the Poltergeist be. And then I could have won the game last turn and now i'm in a very very bad spot i'm on five life uh, my opponent is on six but my opponent has threats on the table is probably going to cast another one let's see what he's going to do yeah there we go singer vampire and netling imp love that old school combination by the way of netling imp and singer vampire um, untapping one of my mana vaults showing the card that i draw probably because it's not enough i'm on four life i need a fireball here because i can tap seven down so i can deal six damage but there is no fireball. Taking care of his Tron by taking care of his tower. But that's it. That's all I can do, really. Um, so I'm losing this one. Losing the first game. Very cool to see um, that Carry On Ants doing the work here. And I'm curious to see uh, what's going to happen in game number two. Game number two. And uh, I must say, I was quite surprised that Tronny managed to win the first game because I started off so well dealing all the damage with the Earth Elemental. And uh, if only I would have used that Lightning Bolt a little bit better. So let's see if I can do that better in this game. It looks like I cannot find an Elemental or not the right mana, perhaps. Remember, I do need two blue mana to cast to cast the blue Elementals and two red to cast the red Elementals. And look at, look at my opponent go, by the way. Tron in turn three, casting a Triskelion. This is exactly what he wants to do. In the meanwhile, I am doing absolutely nothing while casting a Shatter now, finally doing something, but I have to take three damage then, of course, because he's taken off the counters to hit me with his strike, playing a Nettling Imp, beautiful creature. And let's see, playing a second Swamp, so second black. Oh, actually, you already had three uh, uh, black sources, I see. Playing a Sorcerer's Queen, that's a classic combination, but a quick bolt for me on the Queen. Not sure if that's the best decision because, I mean, why bolt it now? I don't have to do that. Uh, why go through my resources? Oh, look at that. A carry-on ants. Remember, he has Tron. He can deal. I think he can kill me next turn if I don't stop the carry-on ants. But I, I'm not playing a blocker. I'm just passing turn here. Oh, wow. And that's it, he's killing with the carry-on hands. That means it's 0-2 for my opponent. And look at my hand, I only had cards that require two blue, and I only had one basic island. Well, Tronny Triart, you have won this match, but the good news for the viewers is we did play a third game. Um, so we are gonna, gonna go to game three, but um, Tronny, you've already won. And that carry-on ants, man, that is a good card. Let's go to game number three. Game number three. So, wow, I just lost the first two games. Well, so I guess sometimes it happens when you're, you're playing with the deck and it's just, you know, it's it's not there. And uh, I must say, it, it, that deck of my opponent, Tronny Tryhard, it looks good. It's very interesting. I like it. I think I think it, I, we've seen it on, on, the, on the channel before. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I really like it. It's a joy to play against it. Some very cool cards in there. Carry on ants, especially one of them. Very interesting to see that working together with Tron. Uh, let me know if you have played with carry on ants in the past. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and there we see a soaring turn one by my opponent and just two mountains from my side, which is not great if you're playing with blue as well. You'd rather have two islands to have some counter capabil capability or at least having the threat of being able to counter. Tapping five here with that soul ring, being able to generate five mana, playing a, um, a vampire there, the Sengir vampire, and that means he can swing in for three here. Or, okay, forking the bolt. Eh, you gotta do what you gotta do, but it's, it's, it doesn't feel good, you know, using two sources, uh, two cards to take care of one card. Tapping five here, and look at that, playing an Earth Elemental, a four five creature. So I guess that can stop the Triskelion. So that's something. And it looks like he's got Tron now or not. I think he's got Tron. That's a power plant and a mine. Oh, this is cool, playing the Hive. The Hive is, the hive is such a cool, I really like this deck. The Hive is such a cool card. You can, um, wow, he's got the combo. Sorry, there's just so much happening here. The Hive is five to cast. 
I think you can pay five to create a one one wasp, wasp wasp token. I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, you can make a one one flying token, and with Hell's Caretaker. Uh, oh, that's why I'm doing this. I'm playing a huge earthquake because I need to get rid of Hell's Caretaker. Because what he can do with Hell's Caretaker is he can make a wasp token. He can sacrifice that token and then he can choose any card from his graveyard, any creature card, and put it directly into play. In this case, he could have taken back a Sangir Vampire, basically trading a 1-1 Flyer for a Sangir Vampire. And of course, he also has a Trike, so it would have gotten all out of... Oh my god, look at that. There's a Carrion Ants hitting the battlefield. What? He only plays, ladies and gentlemen, he only plays with one Carrion Ants. And I don't know why, Tronny Tryhard, you're so incredibly lucky. Uh, you're are just going to kill me again with your carry on ants. This is this is just okay. This is it. This is it. I mean, I am viewers. I'm really sorry. I I hoped to be able to give you more of a fight in game number three, but I guess trying try hard. You're playing with a superior deck. I mean, uh, carry on ants is just uh, too good. I guess I don't I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this uh, interesting interesting brew. Obviously, he's lucky finding carry on hands, but I have to give it to him. I mean, he's able to win with it now in, in at least two games. In game one, it was also a huge problem. And I guess, game you know, looking back, game one, I could have won if I would have played better with the Bolt. But game two and three, it was really, you know, all the way. And you see how fantastically you can abuse... Uh, carry on ants when you've got the Tron combination so for me carry on ants is definitely the MVP of this match and it's 0-3 here for my opponent trying to try our congratulations beautiful deck that you've brought here on Timmy Talks um, if you like what you see please leave a like leave a comment tell me what you think of this brew um, if you want to help the channel you can subscribe you can ring the notification bell that helps because then YouTube thinks I'm really really important um, and you can also share Timmy talks videos including this one on your social uh, you can now also support us financially on the Timmy talks patreon page so you can actually become a patron of the channel and you know we're doing more and more cool stuff with patron now that the patron numbers are increasing we even have a little uh, patron tournament that is coming up so i'm really looking forward to that talking about the uh, patrons let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the patrons of timmy talks what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.